the Fusion Artist Studio once again. My name is Ed Breen, I am your host. And each week we try to probe the mind and thinking and work of an artist just a little bit to get some insight into what they're doing here in Marion and Grant County, why they're doing it, what they would like to be doing, what the community can do, what the Fusion Arts Alliance can do. And our guest today is a Marion native. Uh, he is a performing artist and a writer. Keith Ray, welcome to the studio. Great to be here with you, Ed. Uh, I've known you a long time, off and on. Yep. Uh, tell, us, tell us who Keith Ray is now. Keith Ray right now is a wanderer, a uh, person who loves this country, thinks we live in a beautiful place, gets the opportunity to go out and play guitar and sing songs and make up stuff and go all over the country doing it. And I'm living my dream. That's probably, the, in, in a nutshell, I'm living my dream. We'll back up just a little bit. You were born and reared in Marion. Uh, you ran around the uh, lots of South Marion with a bunch of kids, one of them being a little fella named uh, Jesse Allenbaugh. Yep. And other people who are now uh, running the show in Marion. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends that still live here and are doing great things here. Uh, one brief correction, because my sisters will probably call me down on this. I was born in Madison. Oh, that's right. I was born yeah. in Madison, yeah. but I, we, we moved to Marion. Um, the year before I was in kindergarten. So kindergarten through third grade at Thomas Jefferson, fourth grade through sixth grade at Southeast, one year at McCullough, um, two years at Justice, and then graduate of Marion High School in 1976. And you're the kind of guy who develops lifetime friendships with people in about the third grade. Yep, yeah, well, you know, I've got a couple of friends that I'll see this week that I've known since kindergarten and that's <laughs> which that's, is kind of nice it's good to say that yes um, uh, you you grew up a uh, family of uh, your dad was an accountant correct and you went into a pretty straight day job you were in, uh, working for a not-for-profit for a lot of years correct as a IT professional and uh, at some point in midlife you said that's enough of that going to be a songwriter and a performing musician. You know, that goes all the way back, Ed, to when I was nine. I mean, I was in the Boys Club Singers at age nine, performing all over Grant County, the state of Indiana. We recorded a record. You know, I, and truthfully, I have to say, the first time the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan changed my life. It's where oh, I was headed. Okay. And... Um, had a lot of wonderful opportunities to work with wonderful people in this town. You know, I'm going to give Nancy Lutz and Dale Knauer and Jim Carr and Richie Walton and Lee Names Brown that, and Jim Morton. I could go on and on and on. Lots of folks recognize. I, I stand on the shoulders of giants. When did you start writing songs, both lyric and the music? About 15 minutes after I could play three chords on the guitar. <laughs> um, I learned to play the guitar specifically to write. Um, you know, I have a journalism background. I was the editor I'll of the Cactus at Marion High School. Um, there's another name that I didn't drop that I will now, Dr. Larry Lane. Um, he was the advisor to the Cactus. And he was, and I, I was very fortunate that Larry was working at Justice. Um, when I was there, and so I had him in eighth grade and ninth grade. During ninth grade, he took the job at the high school and became the advisor for both the survey and the cactus. And so I got three more years with Larry at the high school, very, and still a friend of mine today. I'm trying to, trying to find the word to describe what you do. You're not really a folk singer. No. You're sort of a troubadour. Yeah, the word I like to use is Americana okay. artist, but I don't know that it, it could be a lot of things. And, and you know, you know from from the, the visits to the radio station, you never know what kind of song I'm going to play next. 
Um, you know, I grew I'm up. And you, and you don't either. Well, I don't use a set list. I just, whatever song comes in, you know, I, yesterday I played at a, a winery in um, Madison County near Markleville. And um, in the middle of a song, I changed my mind about what the next song was going to be. And literally had set the guitar down, was prepared to pick up another guitar and said, no, I'm going to go back to this guitar and play this one. So yeah, I, uh, I uh, do that pretty much off the cuff. Um, it, it's, it's, it's restricting to me. And I do work from a list because, sure. especially if, if, if I did it, I'd sit out there and play oldies but for the whole, for the whole set. And because it's like, I've got to remember, I've got new songs I want to incorporate in. I need to do this. I need to do that. You, Sometimes it's who's in the crowd. I know there are people, especially in Marion, that I have friends that like specific songs. And so, by golly, if they can take the time to show up at one of my gigs, I'm going to play the song they want to hear. You've done, what, four CDs through the years? Well, technically... Three or four. Well, I've got three. More than one. I've got three national releases. I had two and a half, I guess, um, personal releases before that that were done without distribution, that were done without major marketing, any of that stuff. But the last three have all been nationally um, released, um, and I could, you know, COVID has stopped me from doing what was planned for this spring, which was to start a new project with my producer, Ren Renfrey, in Nashville. Um, but it's simply a matter of the zeros that I put in the, in the ledger book for March and April and May just didn't allow it. You know, I am the son of an accountant. <laughs> so, you know, even though, you know, even though the art's more important to me, it's also important to me, and part of, part of the reason, truthfully, why I worked a day job, and you know, well, you know, I was going to take care of my family, and and make sure that that I provided, and so you know, I played, and I had a studio in my home, but I still went to work every day, and, yeah, and, maybe, can, and I, I guess I can credit and blame Bill Ray for both of those. That's fair. Uh, any idea how many songs you have written that you consider completed that are in your repertoire? One of those COVID nothing else to do activities. I actually have a lyric library that is fairly well put together at this point because I spent about a month spreading paper out on the floor in my apartment and organizing things and making sure things got in the computer. The answer is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 to 150. Pretty remarkable. Some days it is. Talk about the process of writing those. With you, the lyric comes first, right? In in your thought process, or does or does the melody come first? I guess the the rule is there really aren't any rules. It it happens, you know. Sometimes it's I feel like that I'm grabbing this idea out of the sky as it goes by, and if I miss it. It'll keep going. So, um, however that motivation comes, sometimes I do come up with things just sitting and playing the guitar. And it, most of the time it's, you know, a riff or a chord progression or something that's, yeah, this sounds good. Let's see what we can do with it. But you're correct. Most of the time, it's a lyrical idea first. You and I have talked about this before, but you, you carry a notebook, or you did until the, Smartphone came along right. well, where you just good. jot down lines as they come into your head because if you don't do it now, it's gone forever. There's a notebook in my briefcase in the car in the parking lot. So, yes. Um, and if something came right now, I'd find something to write down on. Well, I'll be, we, can, <laughs> we can do that. You're living in Texas. Correct. Longview, Texas, um, which is in deep east Texas. I'm an hour from Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm two hours from Dallas, right off Interstate 20. Um, far enough south that the weather's not too bad, um, far enough north that I don't have to live through any more hurricanes because I lived in Houston for 35 years and I've done six of them and I think that's a quota for anyone's lifetime. Um, 
and I can get to either coast. You know, I, I, I obviously come to Indiana three, four times a year. You know, I have a billion friends here. Um, the venues in this town have been very good to me, and WBAT has been very good to me. I've been on the radio many times with you and with Tim, and um, that, that feels really good for your, for your hometown to embrace you that way. But I can be in Colorado in, in less than two days. I could be on the East Coast in less than two days. It just makes sense. You parachute into the hometown with some frequency. You keep in touch with a lot of people here. Do you get a sense of how the arts community in Marion is faring these days? Well, you know, there, there are some things that make me really, really happy. You know, I, and there are things that bother me a little. I, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, you know, I've become friends with Mark Fowler and some of the things that Mark's done with Community in the Arts downtown, great stuff. I mean, you know, again, I'm going back to Nancy Lutz, which is ground zero for me. She was my elementary school uh, music teacher, and she didn't teach me music. She made me, or taught me to love music. And when you walk in the door down there, the first picture on the wall is Nancy. Okay. So that tells me this place has got a pretty good direction going. Um, you know, I had the opportunity with Jim Mortz and Lee Brown to be in part of civic theater at the high school. When it was a, you know, we were doing off-Broadway quality productions in Marion, Indiana, and it was good. And we enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. I'm glad that Civic is still active. Um, I hate not being in the auditorium, although I'm glad they have a space downtown. I've been to a couple of their events. I know they're hurting right now because they can't do productions, therefore right. they're not making any money. And boy, do I feel the pain from that. Are there musicians in the area that you keep in touch with? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess to start that list, uh, Dave Gray is a buddy of mine and Dave plays around quite a bit. Um, <laughs> My favorite musician in this town is buried at IOOF. His name is Bob Weisler. He was my best friend and my college roommate and my drummer. And uh, Bobby gets new sticks every time I'm in town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have, and I have friends in Indianapolis who play um, and, and friends in South Bend who played. So, you know, it's kind of all over the map. But yeah, I do. You know, I have more friends who are musicians than not musicians. Talk about your touring. You go everywhere. Right. Uh, you go wherever there's a place that will set up a chair for you and give you a mic and turn the lights on. Pretty much. Uh, talk about that experience, where, the places that you've been. 46 of the 50 states, Canada, Europe. Um, the process is kind of... And it's, it, it develops over the years. It's, it's the hardest part of this, absolutely. Booking, booking shows is 20 times more work than anything else I do and consumes most of my time. But usually it starts with a, either a notion of where I want to go, like Denver, Colorado, or Hilton Head, South Carolina, where I have friends that I can stay okay. with. And, and truthfully, the economy of it for me works best because of the fact that, you know, in a class of almost 900 kids at Marion High School in 1976, I literally have friends everywhere. And I, I, I can't even begin to thank the people who have welcomed me into their homes, fed me, gave me a place to sleep, um, didn't mind that I dropped three guitars inside the front hallway. Um, that makes it work. But then it's, it's okay, I'm going to be in the Denver area for the next two weeks. Where can I play? And can I find, a, especially a Friday night show, a Saturday night show? Um, that's what keeps me at break even, more or less, financially. And then if, if, if I find something else, and, and there are you know, Sunday afternoon shows, Wednesday, Thursday shows, to me that's kind of what I call found money, um, because I'm not anticipating to have a show on Wednesday night, but every once in a while I do. So, it, and it takes, 
You know, you don't pick up the phone anymore and call a venue. Nobody wants a phone call. Uh, it's all done through social media oh, uh, and, okay. and, and okay. email. And candidly, part of the reason that I want it, especially I prefer email because then all the details are in writing. What they agreed date-wise, time-wise, what the expectations were for me, what the expectations were for them. So I always have it. I really have not had a lot of problems. I have been double booked a few times. That happens to every musician. And I have had the privilege at least once of being triple booked, which was the most interesting. Well, that had to be interesting. Well, and actually the lady felt bad for me and knew that, that well, they wanted me and, and the people who kind of made the mistake were already set up and I was going to make them tear their stuff down. And, and the good news me. in all of this is you get invited back. There, yes. are, there are places that you visit regularly. And that makes it a whole lot easier the second or the third time through Denver or Savannah or the middle of Florida or wherever. Yeah, the repetition makes the job of booking easier because there are venues that want me at least annually. And You're uh, very soon headed for New Mexico? Correct. One of my favorite places, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, and... Uh, I've got a couple of things booked. I've got another weekend that I'm saying, well, if I book something, that'll be great. If I don't, I've not been to Big Bend National Park, and that's where I'm going to head the second week is the Big Bend. <laughs> well, it's essential that you visit there. I love, well, and you know, I just came back from the tour on the, out west where I didn't have any shows. You made to, the big tour of the west. Yes, and... and Black Hills, Montana, Wyoming, you did it all. North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Mecca. <laughs> Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh, that, I, it, I try to block that out of my mind, but you I, don't. Well, and I resisted wearing my Packers shirt today. <laughs> we, and we appreciate that. <laughs> You're in Colts country. You know, the Colts weren't here. The Colts were in Baltimore well, that's when true. I grew up yeah. here. There wasn't yeah. a team in Cincinnati at the time either. Uh, you you were doing another concert in Marion before you depart. Correct on Friday night. This this Friday night the sixteenth sixteenth at uh, Folkies downtown Folky Marion the Folky Dome the tent outside it is that's the plan uh, you know as as social distancing with all that sort of thing as Craig Persinger will say. That, that, that it's a game time decision about whether or not we're inside or outside, depending upon the weather. But yes, we're hoping and planning to do that outside. It's a lot more fun. When you come back to Marion, the town has changed Absolutely. dramatically. Uh, what do you see when you come back now? A lot of houses in disrepair, I think more than anything. I've driven it to, and I, I make a point of going from one end of town to the other of taking different routes each time. So um, I get to see a pretty good cross section of what the city looks like. Um, some positive things though, you know, I drive through Shady Hills and I see those houses and, and not too long ago, a few of those were not in, in the best of shape. Shady Hills, those houses, homes look great, but to drive up and down 7th Street or Boot Street and, and just see all the buildings that you know, candidly look like they need to be torn down. And that may, that saddens me. I understand. Keith Ray, we thank you for your time. We wish you well. Have a good tour. And stop in again when you're back in town. Mr. Ed, it's always a pleasure, sir. Always. And tune in again when we will have another artist on another topic in the very near future. On behalf of the Fusion Arts Alliance, we thank you for being here. <laughs>